Today, you guys, we are going to be making shepherd's pie. So I don't know if some of you guys know what it is, but it's something that I grew up eating and obviously my mom introduced it to me and it just tastes phenomenal. It's like just something that I just always have to have. It reminds me of my childhood. It just takes me back to the good old days before we had bills and children <laughs> and stress and anxiety, turmoil, <laughs> anguish, come back. sadness. Come back to oh, life, Caroline, come back. back. You back? Okay. <sighs> hey guys welcome back welcome back to my channel it's me Brittany aka pineapple vegan and today we're you know I don't want to be on camera oh <laughs> mama what's this Stop. that's my my vote post so this is my mom Michelle She's also our head baker. If you've ever had our Twinkies, our Bundt Cakes, any of our desserts, except for the pies, she made them. So let's put it out there. My mom refuses to call herself vegan or vegetarian or anything. She don't like labels. I told her she don't need labels. Just eat what you want, eat what makes you feel good. She does not eat meat. She does not eat fish or anything like that. She keeps trying, but she hasn't had it in so long, so she gets sick. You get physically sick where like you're stuck in the bed for days. You have pain and, and nausea, all that, all that fun stuff. But she does love cheese. I'm talking about like she likes that gourmet sharp cheese where you have to cut the blocks and eat pieces of cheese with crackers and tea. Yes, cause I am boost water, I'm sorry. And she makes up words. Oh. So first word of the day, boost water. Don't steal it. Booze water. What does boost water mean? That's me. It's like bougie and somewhat bougetto and somewhat ratchet and then a tad bit valley girl and this bouge water. That's me. So, mama, um, basically we're going to cook this together, but she's going to be taking over a little bit and I'm going to be putting my spin onto it and getting bossed around by my mama and her telling me what to do. I don't like this. Well, let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> so I'm gonna put the oil in here. So this pan is already hot. So it's gonna probably be really loud and sizzly. <laughs> it's just sizzling all over the place. I'm talking about when we put the food in. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. That was probably about three or four tablespoons of oil. And then we put the peppers and onions in, right? Yes. Okay, <laughs> hold on. We might not need garlic. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I could do it. I said self, myself self. <laughs> and I can do, do it. it. <laughs> I'm gonna put the garlic in last because it'll burn. Cause it's oil. So I'll put these in. <laughs> Putting in the onions. Now I'm gonna put the garlic in. Let's mix this up some. All right, mama, do you know where shepherd's pie came from? I just know we used to eat it a lot when we were growing up. I grew up in the East Coast and um, Rhode Island, shout out. It's real, you know, preferable up there, but I noticed that over the years that it's sort of making its way down to the Southern states. So. And I've actually seen or like other people post about it. So I guess it is known down here, but they do make it different from Ours, theirs be looking nasty. No offense. Do you want me to go ahead and add the ground? Um, no. Not yet. Um, yeah. Not yet, not yet. Okay. So, Tam, just a little bit more. Smells so good. Not quite a caramelized, but kind of in between the caramelized, yeah. We're using the beefless grounds, um, the garden ones. You can use whatever grounds you want. You don't even have to use grounds. You can actually use lentils if you don't want to use mock meat, PVP, tofu, whatever you want to use. Whatever you like. Now add it. Yep. You guys can't tell, but it actually already smells phenomenal in here. Mm -hmm. It does smell good. Make me hungry. So these are actually room temperature. We took them out about two hours ago. If you try to cook them while they're frozen, it tends to throw off your vegetables that are there. Just, it doesn't take but a few minutes to get the ground meat um, to be like room temperature. So 
Once you do that, everything will cook evenly. So it's cooking here, I guess, while this is cooking. So what do you want to do next? We're going to season the meat. Everybody seasons their meat differently, and this is when you can go in there and put your own twist on it. So we have a bunch of different spices that we cannot tell you anything about because if we do, then we're going to have to kill you. We, Mama, we have to tell them some of the spices so they can make it at home. You don't have to tell them your secret spices, but you have to tell them some of the spices. Okay, salt. Mama. <laughs> okay, salt and pepper. Mama, salt and pepper is not it. It's a lot of stuff here. Okay. Why did you want me to do? Cause you know what I'm saying. You know, I don't even want to do any of this. Hey y'all. Anyway. So what is that salt? Yeah, this is salt. So we're not measuring. Okay, obviously Never this measure. is like a. This is how we cook. And this is how she cook. I'm gonna tell you right now, you're not getting measurements from my mama. It's not happening. She's gonna be like, two pinches. What are you putting on now? Garlic powder. Okay. And this is onion powder. And y'all see the size of that spoon. That's about a table. I mean, is that a teaspoon? It's about a teaspoon, yeah. Yeah, so a teaspoon. a teaspoon of onion powder, a teaspoon of garlic powder, and she did about three pinches of salt. Mm -hmm. And that's the pink Himalayan sea salt. What's that? This right here is adobo. And let me tell you something, there's all different kind of varieties of adobo, but you really can't go wrong because it actually gives you like that salt season flavor to it, but it's not. Once you get used to using it, then you'll know about how much to put in there. We put it in everything almost. So adobo is like a, kind of like a season off. Yeah, it's pretty, yeah. And we use the Goya brand and that's about a tablespoon of Goya all purpose seasoning. Black pepper. Yeah. Black pepper. Ground black pepper. You really don't want to use too much. It's about a half a teaspoon. You really don't want to use too much of this because this will be overpowering because it's like natural pepper. It's it's potent. That's my favorite part, the pepper. I'm going to turn the oven on. Okay. Don't leave me here by myself. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was gone for two seconds. It was like three. It's like between you and Jay. See, I'm just trying to take over. What is that? You have... <laughs> Spice. What type of spice? It's a little dash of ground spice. Cloves. <laughs> ground cloves is an overwhelming taste, but if you use it very sparingly, it actually gives just about any form of um, meat or dish. Whatever you're using, it'll give it a really nice flavor. That makes sense now. I've tasted that before, but I never could tell what it was. But I love cloves in moderation. Mm -hmm. What that is? This right here is which this is the sauce. You did not say that right. <laughs> it's Worcestershire sauce. This one's it. Anyway, I'm gonna use about two teaspoons, maybe three teaspoons. That's not three, it's two. Yeah, that's about two teaspoons. Oh, it smells good, mama. What's that? It does. This is actually steak sauce. You don't want to use too much of this, but it actually gives it a, a, like a rich taste. It's really, really that. good. Yeah, it's really good. And that looks like you're doing two. About two teaspoons. Because we use a lot of spices when we cook, and some of you might also too, if you put actually like a teaspoon, maybe a tablespoon of brown sugar in it, it kind of doesn't take away from that spice, but it kind of just like knocks it down just a little bit so you still get that spicy flavor it's but balanced. it's not overwhelming yeah that's so like balance so that's one tablespoon of brown sugar brown sugar baby i'm actually going to use two is that hot sauce it is hot sauce it is it is it is, it is. i know that i love hot sauce put some hot sauce with my baby that's probably about a tablespoon. Maybe yeah, because you didn't even use it all. Yeah, mm -mm. it's not. You gonna stir it up? Yeah, man, my brothers are gonna be mad because my brothers aren't vegan, but they like the food that we make, and my mama can throw Z on. Like I can't even take all the credit. I can take credit for making vegan food, but my mama has taught me how to cook. You put butter in there? Just a little. That's fat. Do it. I'm going to. You is so greedy. Put more. <laughs> they gonna hate us. How we be eating it? Look at us. Are we fat? You didn't know that? We are pH. Oh. <laughs> oh. 
So that's about three tablespoons of butter. Yeah, that's three. Okay. And don't worry that I know it looks like a lot. It's not. Really. No, we don't. Yeah. It makes sense. That's how you always get the creaminess. I turned it down a little while ago, so it's actually on five. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit more to like two and a half. And I'm just going to let this kind of like marinate, actually. Don't turn it off or because you're gonna, yeah. then you're going to let it, you're going to let it get a little too cold and you don't want to do it when it's cold. And then while that's doing that, we can actually start on the potatoes and the corn. So this is how it looks so far. Looks good. See the flavor? Can you see You it? see the colors are still there? The colors are making this pop and it's really good. It smells so mm -hmm. good. All right, so now what we are doing is basically she's cutting the corn off of the cob. It actually tastes a whole lot better and it's a different flavor to it if you actually do it like this because the vegetable, of course, it, it's, it's more nutritious than a can, no preservatives. But it's going to taste really good because half of it's going to be this corn, half of it's going to be the green beans, and then the potatoes is going to top it. It's almost like a food sundae. Everybody does it differently, so you're not obligated to do the corn on the cob, but it will taste a whole lot better. But while she's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and do the um, mashed potatoes. So I have just regular mashed potatoes, the Idaho, and I do have the skin on them. Why are you looking at me, looking at you, she looking at me? She just want all the attention. Huh? I ain't stupid. I know. Squeeze me? She just want to be seen, making all them clack and clank. Why am I, I do not. I don't even like the camera. I don't know what you're talking about. I know. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to do the potatoes. <laughs> so I'm going to put the um, rest of the butter that she used. So it was a stick of butter, and she used three tablespoons of it. So I'm gonna put that in here. Yes, it's a lot of butter, but you ain't gotta eat it, so mind your business. So this is garlic powder and this is onion powder. You always can tell because garlic powder is dorka. It's dork skin and this is light skin cousin Pookie. So it's Pookie and Brandon? Pookie, Pookie and Brandon, okay. yeah. Okay. And she's salty. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna put some salt in there. So about three cool. pinches of salt. Okay, I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. I like to do this better when the potatoes are hot, but it took us a while to get started because somebody kept having to leave and do their makeup and hair. Yeah, you're gonna definitely have to be better prepared then. And, mm -hmm. Mama, your corn keeps peeing on me. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to stop making all these accusations, okay? Stop making them worse. <laughs> so the sour cream, I'm gonna put in not a bit, cause you like you like it really creamy, right? Not really. Not really creamy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whatever you say, honey, girl. Okay, and then I'm gonna put Brandon, aka garlic powder, in first. And this is probably about. Let me do a little bit more. That's probably about a tablespoon. And then the onion powder, pookie, about the same. And then the black pepper. And this is how much is this, mom? It's about a teaspoon. Yeah. Yeah, it's about a teaspoon. And I'm just gonna mix it up really well. No, don't leave me in here by myself. Hey. This is really my show. You know, I just let her think it's hers, you know, because you know how kids are. But, anyway. What you doing? Hey, baby. What you doing? Nothing. Oh, what man. are you doing? I'm not doing anything. This is my show. You being accusatory. You are so being accusatory. This is my show, mama. I really should have had a better prenatal care, y'all. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm gonna add some more sour cream to this. Are you almost done with your corn lady? Yep. So these are just vegan shreds. It's the Daya Pepper Jack and Follow Your Heart Cheddar. They all belong together, okay? So I'm just gonna put some in here. And you do need to save some for the end because we're gonna top the shepherd's pie with cheese. Mama, yes, while I have you on camera, mm -hmm. I need you to tell the world that I'm your favorite child. So what are you doing now? You ain't getting <laughs> for your birthday. <laughs> you ain't getting it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna spray the pan. Oh, you already did. <laughs> you just put it in here? Yes, ma'am. Okay. 
right at the bottom of it. So I'm just gonna put it all in and then I'm gonna spread it evenly across the bottom. Are you gonna put some cheese? I mean, maybe just a little if, layer? If that's what you want. Yeah, just a, a little layer to it. Oh, it looks, it looks good and smells good. Yeah. This corn is gonna be fire because it's fresh off of the cob. Yeah, I was about to say that all the vegetables are fresh, so it's it's gonna be really good regardless. Now this is just a can of French cut green beans. I know we was talking noise about canned vegetables, but it's the difference in the corn and green beans. The French cut green beans, my kids love these for like green bean salad where we just put Italian seasoning, I mean Italian um, dressing on them. And she's gonna spread that out. And then that's how it looks after she spread the corn and green beans evenly. Now the potatoes. Mm -hmm. Potatoes are gonna be a little bit harder to spread, so it's actually if you could just like give them lumps here and there, lump them down, and then take a fork and go over the top of them because you really don't want to mash it down into it. You just want to kind of like tap the potatoes on top. And I know you're thinking this is probably thick. They're not. It's just that they're a little bit cool. So once this warms up, this is just going to like be amazing. And you do want, you want that flavor because once you put it in the oven, that flavor is going to come all the way up through to this. Right so yeah. All right, but yeah, like when you put these fork things in here, you're not really compacting it potato so that when it cooks from the bottom, it's still coming up through everything. And now she's just topping it with the cheese. As much cheese as you want. For 30 minutes or yeah, about 30 minutes in the oven, you're gonna cover this with foil. And after 30 minutes, then you're gonna take the foil off and put it in there so that this uh, cheese on top is gonna give it a nice little texture on the top. It's gonna be like a little crispy cheese on top. Ready to go in the oven? It is ready. So you said for 30 minutes? Mm-hmm. Okay. Going in the oven. We'll be back in 30 minutes. Ta-ta. Really quick, um, before I put it in the oven. So I like to spray the foil like that so that the foil doesn't stick to the cheese because it will. But if you put oil on it, it won't. All right, guys, we're back. So what we did was we put it in the oven covered with the foil for 30 minutes. And then after 30 minutes, I took the foil off and I put it back in the oven for another 30 minutes. So it's for an hour total. As you can see, it's looking real thick and like. All the cheese isn't completely melted, but it's fine. It's actually really soft and gooey to touch. But you can leave yours in longer if you want the cheese completely melted. That's perfectly fine. Everything's already cooked through. You're just basically like marrying them together, right? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and try it. So this is how it looks. And obviously as it cools down, it's actually thicker and it'll have like a layered look, but we're cutting it fresh out of the oven. So if you want that layered look, let it sit and rest for a little bit. It smells so good. I can smell the peppers and onions, everything. You can actually eat this with cornbread. You can eat it with bread, crackers. Mama. A cold wind. Oh my God. You came out real good. And that cheese has like a, the top layer is so like crispy, but it's like still super cheesy and soft. It was perfect. Yeah, as you let it sit, it'll be more firmer mm -hmm. for you to cut it. It's good. It's good, mama. Mmm. Y'all gonna try it. You're gonna, you're gonna love it. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for doing this video with me, mama. You did great. You're so throwed off. I'm so happy the world <laughs> has like a more, I guess, focus on who you are and just a little bit more of your personality and more of my personality because I am you. So thank you so much. And thank you guys for watching this video. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click that notification button so that you will be notified whenever I upload a video. If you like videos with me and my mom, I could do like a cooking with mom video or like something like that, maybe once or twice a month. Um, so we can show you more of what we actually eat and more of our background and the type of food that she makes because we have a range of the type of food that we make. So just let me know and we can do this again. So thank you so much guys and I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Save the turtles. It's always <laughs> there. It's always there. <laughs>